Hey guys, it's Kevin Vandy, and welcome back to part 2 of my Power Director 16 tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm just going to be going over all the important settings and tweaks that are available to you here in Power Director, so you can make your editing experience a little easier and more efficient. So let's get started. And actually, one of the first settings I'm going to recommend is right here in the startup window, and that's the checkbox here that says Always Enter Timeline Mode. What this does is when we launch PowerDirector from the desktop or taskbar, it'll just go directly into editing mode. Also here, you can tell PowerDirector which aspect ratio you'll be using, though you don't really need to worry about that yet because you can just change it while you're in editing mode anyway, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Alright, now that we're in the main editor, let's get into where all the main settings are. Up here in the title bar, you'll see this little gear icon. This is where all the main settings are stored, but notice right next to it, we can change the aspect ratio right here to either 4x3, 16x9, vertical video, or the 360 degree editor. So that's where you can do that, but we're just going to launch into the main settings right now. Now notice that the settings window sorts all your settings between 12 different tabs. I'll be going over each tab and telling you which settings are actually important and which ones you should just leave alone. Now first, in the general tab that's already open here, there are a few things to be aware of. This is where you can change the kind of audio channel, the default timeline frame rate, or whether or not to use the drop frame timecode if you are using a NTSC frame rate. Now I know some of this might sound a little complicated for some of you beginners, but I'll try to explain this as well as I can. Now the first thing I mentioned is the audio channel, and this is actually pretty simple. Usually you should just keep this in stereo mode for your normal videos. However, if you know what you're doing or you want to do some advanced audio editing in your project for something like a movie or short film, then this is where you can change the audio channel to 5.1 surround sound. Changing the timeline frame rate changes what kind of video the timeline is expecting. There are different reasons why you would choose different frame rates. If you want to make a movie or short film, you should typically choose 24 frames per second. If you're making a YouTube video, usually you choose 30 frames per second. Or if you're making a gaming video to upload to YouTube, then you, most people would choose 60 frames per second. However, you don't want to be deciding what frame rate your project is going to be right before you start editing it. At this stage, you just want to be choosing the frame rate that your footage was already shot or recorded in. You should have decided on your frame rate before you filmed or recorded and have made the necessary changes to your camera or screen capture software. So just choose whatever frame rate your footage is already in. And I'll be using 30 frames per second video here for this tutorial. Now one more thing here with the 30 frames per second option is that there's a drop frame time code for this option. And when this is enabled, what it does is it makes the 30 frames per second to actually 29.97 frames per second, which is actually more standard. It's actually a little more complicated than that, but I'm just going to recommend that you keep this option at yes, unless you know what you're doing. Now the next setting I want you to be aware of is the Enable Shadow Files on High Res Videos. This is an important option to enable if you want to edit with 4K or high resolution video files, but only if you don't really have a powerful or expensive computer. What this does is it will temporarily convert your high resolution files into temporary low resolution files behind the scenes of PowerDirector so that it will be a lot easier for your CPU to handle while you edit in your timeline. Really, if you have an average computer and you're just editing in 1080p or lower, you should just leave this option off. But if you ever find that you are having a hard time getting your video to play smoothly in the timeline, remember that this option is here. Personally, I'm just going to leave this option off since I'm not using 4K video files and my PC handles 1080p files just fine. And of course, there is also this option here to automatically delete these temporary files every 30 days so that your hard drive doesn't get taken up by all these extra PowerDirector files. I'm going to leave the rest of this stuff alone and now let's move on to the editing tab. I suggest that you keep most settings in the top section here at their defaults. Though right here is where you can change the default type of transition if you want to do that. Now here at the bottom section is where we can change the default durations of certain kinds of clips. For example, I only like my transitions to be about a half second long. So I'll change that here to 0.5. And now all the transitions that I add will automatically be only half a second long. And down here also at the bottom is where we can change the keyboard shortcuts. This can be very useful if you are used to editing in another video editor like Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas Pro or whatever you've used to use. 
So with this you can keep the keyboard shortcuts for editing that you already know. Alright, so now I'm going to move on to the file tab. And here in the file tab, we have our default locations for importing and exporting. So as it is right now, my default import folder is my documents folder. And I don't know about you, but I never actually import anything from my documents folder, so I'm going to change this to something more relevant. Usually when I import something, it's from my videos folder, so that's all I'm going to do to change that. Now, every time I try to import something, it'll first bring me to my videos folder. And I'm going to change my export folder to something more relevant too. Right now it's just in some crazy subfolder in my documents folder. So I'm actually going to change this to just be my desktop. That way, every time I'm done producing a video, the video file will just show up on my desktop. But anyways, now let's move on to the display tab. Here in the display tab, we're only going to be looking at this very first option. And this is where you can change the preview quality of your media preview. Now, if you have a really good high-end computer, you can go ahead and just preview all your clips in full HD resolution. But if you have an older or slower computer and your media preview is struggling to play everything smoothly, you can lower the preview quality and they'll help everything play a little bit more smoothly. Now the next tab is the Hardware Acceleration tab. And this is, tab is actually kind of confusing for a lot of people because Cyberlink is sort of lagging behind in compatibility for some of the newer graphic cards out there. These features are supposed to let PowerDirector take better advantage of your CPU or GPU and speed up the rendering or preview quality. Now for most of you who have both a good CPU and a good GPU, this is going to really help you if you enable both of these features. However, there have been some problems for people out there who have either old AMD graphics cards or newer NVIDIA graphics cards. I've seen some reports on the Cyberlink forum of people with older AMD cards that when they enable hardware acceleration, it'll crash PowerDirector and they can't even start it up again. I myself have spent a fair amount of time trying to get my N NVIDIA graphics card to be used by PowerDirector, but it looks like it just isn't supported. This isn't really that big a deal since my CPU is also really good, but before you enable these, you might want to do a little bit of research on the Cyberlink forums. I am going to just go ahead and enable these since I've tested it and they actually work okay. I do get a warning box here telling me that I need to keep my graphics driver up to date, but I already do a good job of doing that, so now let's just move on to the project tab. Now this tab actually has two really important settings I want to point out. First, we want to make sure that the autosave project is enabled. And I'm going to set this just to the minimum of two minutes. That way, it'll, every two minutes, it will be autosaving my project in case the power director crashes, which I almost guarantee is going to happen to you at some point in your editing career. Now, the second feature I want you to see is this automatically loads sample clips when power director opens. And when this is enabled, it is automatically loading all these sample clips here in the background. And most of us really don't like this. So when we uncheck this, now whenever PowerDirector starts up, and our library will only contain footage that we ourselves import. Additionally, notice there's also a setting here that says automatically load the last project when PowerDirector opens. When this is enabled, PowerDirector will automatically open to the most recent project you're working on. Now this can be really useful if you're working on the exact same project for months at a time and you just want to load up the project really quickly. Now on the Produce tab, I'm actually going to recommend that you enable the first three settings here. And what these settings do is they uh, make the render quality a bit better and a bit faster when you're producing your video. Now the reason these aren't enabled by default is that some older computers have problems with these things. But if you have an average computer, go ahead and enable them. They'll make your final video a little bit better. Now I'm going to leave everything here in the capture tab alone, but there are a few things you can change here if you use the capture uh, function of PowerDirector a lot. But here on the confirmation tab, there's a few important things here. This is where you can disable or re-enable some of the dialog warning boxes that pop up when you are editing. Also notice that right here, is where you can re-enable the startup launcher for PowerDirector that we changed at the beginning of this video. Now these last three tabs are pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can sign into your Director Zone account to download free titles and templates and transitions and anything else. 
And if you bought the whole director suite, you should have access to Cyberlink cloud storage. So this is where you can manage those settings. And this last tab is where you can just opt in or out of the Cyberlink improvement program if you want to let PowerDirector send bug reports back to Cyberlink. But that pretty much covers everything for this video. If you guys have any questions or tips of your own for setting up PowerDirector the way you like it, please post them in the comments below. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion down there. Click these end cards here if you want to see either part 3 of my tutorial series where I show you basic editing on the timeline, or part 4 where I show you the best settings for rendering your video. Anyway guys, hope you guys have a good day, and remember to like and subscribe for more PowerDirector tutorials.